What's good everyone, welcome back to the channel. On today's video, we're going for the first run in the Nike Pegasus 38. Now, before we get going on this, I've been running in the Nike Pegasus for a long time. Skipped a couple years when I found other shoes, but I've always come back to it. I ordered this shoe and I wanted to get this review out to you guys as soon as possible, but it was delivered and it sat right, right down here, sat in the box for the last week. I could not bring myself to go out in it. There was something about it that made me be not excited about running in it. But I have finally pulled myself together. I figure everybody needs a daily trainer and I took it out this morning. This video is my first impressions of the Nike Pegasus 38. Let's see what I think. Right, fantastic run, fantastic first run in Nike's newest Pegasus, the Pegasus 38. Okay, the Pegasus 38 is everything I expected it to be. I'm running different iterations of the Pegasus more than any other shoe that I can remember. You already know from seeing my introduction that I was hesitant to take this shoe out. I don't know why, it just struck me as a little boring, but I think boring is good in this case. There are so many shoes out there nowadays that are exciting, that you can get a certain shoe for a particular type of run. If you're not into having a shoe for every type of run that you would ever do, perhaps consider the Nike Pegasus 38. So today's run was 11 miles, kept it to an average of eight minutes a mile, but it was a lot slower than that in the beginning. And then I picked it up. I did eight one minute intervals just to kind of get my legs turning, really to see how these shoes perform when you pick up the pace. And you can see right here that I wasn't exactly consistent with those intervals, but the effort felt the same. And it was getting towards the end of my run and yada, 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 on with the excuses, Matt. Today's run was 72 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 22.22 Celsius. Now, some of you may be thinking, sounds pretty good, sounds nice and warm, but it was also 99% humidity. So a real soaker. And I bet these shoes have gained some weight. After I'm done talking to you right here, we're gonna go inside. I have put them on the scale before I went for my run. Then I'm gonna go inside, put them on the scale after the run. We're gonna see how much weight they actually gained. Cause there's a lot of cushion in this shoe. A lot of cushion to soak up the sweat. Is it a bad thing? Maybe, maybe not. I guess it depends on where you live. But let's start at the top and work our way down. And we're starting at the top because the main difference between this, the 38 and the 37 is the upper. The upper is a lovely engineered mesh. And what they've done is to kind of expand the toe box just a little from the 37. Now, a lot of people complained in the 37 that it was a bit narrow. What I did notice when I put my foot in here is that it was incredibly comfortable. I didn't feel anything on the outside. Now, I usually feel where my little toe is on a lot of shoes, especially when I first put them on. That feeling tends to go away once I start running, but I didn't feel that at all in these shoes. They were definitely wide enough in the toe box to fit my foot very well. And they were comfortable throughout the whole run. Keep in mind, this is just my first run. The full review will come after 100 miles after I've had a lot more time to get used to these shoes. Now this means absolutely nothing, but I love the color. The black is very sleek. Not really a fan of black shoes, but I love the black in the front, the white in the back, these purple lace loops, lovely. Nice touch. Now, honestly, I don't really care how a shoe looks unless I don't like it. So what I'm saying is I really care how a shoe looks. It can feel good, it can look good, but if it feels good and looks good, got a pretty solid shoe. Staying at the top, we have a nice lockdown across this midfoot. I didn't have any pinching and it just felt right. The tongue on the Pegasus, on this Pegasus, they've also added a little more padding to the tongue than they did in the 37. And I'd say it's a medium squishiness. It's not that super one ply tongue that you'll see on some of the racing shoes. It is, this is a daily trainer so it does have a little more cush and that contributes to that nice soft lockdown feeling the tongue is gusseted it's almost it's almost like a booty rather than having those gusseted pieces of material that just tie it to the bottom of the shoe it blends in nicely with the rest of the material inside the shoe felt really good the heel collar is very plush no one is ever going to complain about it like rubbing the outside of your foot about it not being comfortable this is extremely comfortable there's lots of padding here typical for a daily trainer the heel counter is nice and rigid now a lot of people complained with the Pegasus 37 about heel slippage. I'm not really one to talk about that because I didn't experience heel slip in the 37 and I didn't experience heel slip in the 38. So for me, it's a win. The laces are lovely. There's really not much to talk about. They just work. They locked it down well. There was enough stretch, but not too much stretch. You know what I'm saying? And it's a nice linguine shape. I think linguine shaped laces are the best laces. The outsole remains the same as the Nike Pegasus 37. It is React throughout. Just so you know, the Nike Pegasus 37 was the first year that they put React foam throughout the whole 
cool thing and it works very well. React foam is a treat to run in. We've also got this four foot air unit, which just helps give the shoe a little extra pop when you're picking up the pace. Just like in the Nike Pegasus 37, Nike has tweaked the PSI to fit the specific needs of men and women. We have 27 and a half millimeters in the heel, 17 and a half millimeters in the fore for a 10 millimeter drop. Pretty normal for the Nike Pegasus. As long as I can remember, they've always been a 10 millimeter drop. And if it ain't broke, don't fix it. 10 millimeter drop works. So you know I was hesitant to wear this shoe. I was almost gonna send it back. After one run, I'm glad I didn't. And here's why. Everybody needs a shoe like this in their rotation. While yes, there are a lot more exciting shoes out there, if you would have one shoe, this could be it. This shoe is soft enough and cushioned enough to go out for those long runs, but it's also responsive enough and peppy enough and not too soft that you can pick up the pace and do certain speed workouts. Now, at the beginning of my running career, I did run a lot of marathons in the Nike Pegasus. Never had a problem. And I can, I don't know if I want to put a guarantee on someone else's product, but this shoe has worked for me over the years. And if you're not someone that wants a whole slew of shoes, this will work for you for pretty much whatever you want to do. All right, my friends, let's get inside. Let's throw these bad boys on the scale so we can see how much weight they gained on today's run. All right, solid first run in the Nike Pegasus 38. You already know how I feel. You already know how I feel about it. I told you outside. I don't know what I was thinking, not wanting to wear this immediately. I just think I've been swept up in all these new shoes and having something that's like my bread and butter, for a second, I lost sight of what's important. And having a shoe that you can go out and run comfortably whenever you want, whatever you want to do is worth its weight in gold. And I should tell you, this shoe retails for $120, which is a fantastic value for a shoe that you can get this kind of use out of. We didn't talk about it outside. Let's just go to the outsole briefly for a second. Obviously, no wear. I only ran 11 miles. We're not going to see any wear. But there is enough rubber on the outsole to last a long time. And just to give you an idea, I have have run 520 miles in my Pegasus 37s. Those are holding up beautifully. Now I'm probably going to retire the 37s now that I have the 38s, but just to give you an idea of how long these shoes will last. I'd say if you wanted to, you could put 600 miles in this shoe, maybe more. So let's just talk about weight for just a second because you know, my friends, this is not a skinny mini. I mean, size nine comes in at 10.2 ounces or 289 grams. But as always, I do not wear a men's size nine. So my size is considerably heavier. My size men's 13 US, size 12 UK, comes in at 12.8 ounces or 362 grams. But wait, but wait, there's more. That's not all. You know, I told you about the weather, right? 72 degrees, 99% humidity, I was sweating quite a bit. And while I lost a few pounds due to sweat, the shoe put on a bit of weight. After my run, this shoe now weighs 14.2 ounces or 403 grams. That's a bit of weight gain in quite a short amount of time, don't you think? First review, Nike Pegasus 38. Give this video a like if you liked it. Post new running videos at least twice a week. Be kind, be happy, run well. And if you have made it this far, I'd really like you to leave a comment. Have you run in the Pegasus before? Let me know down here. See you in a couple of days, guys.